welcome to another Cat Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Jesse. Last week I did a turkey time lapse in which I drew this turkey in SolidWorks. This week we'll take a look at one of the details which I think is one of the more complicated parts of the model. For the feathers in the background, I decided to use a multi-body technique because I wanted to be able to isolate the shapes of the feathers and work with them alone. So let's see how that works. I'll roll back to the point where we have just the individual body itself. Now when I created this shape, I created this with splines, and when I created the feature, I simply unchecked merge result. This left me with a separate body that was independent of the body that I was currently working on. We'll see that this geometry is all cut into an existing plate. So I created this as a solid rather than as a cut and use a combine tool to remove the material after the fact. Let's see how this was an advantage. Since we have this shape as its own separate body, that means I can manipulate this separate from everything else. In this case, I wanted to create a bi-directional circular pattern, so that's what we'll do here. We'll go up to our patterns, select circular pattern, and I use this bottom edge as my reference. That's a little bit small, so I'll use my G key to zoom in with the magnifying glass. Once we have our reference, we can set our spacing. We'll go by 30 degrees and the circular pattern now supports multiple directions. Here we can say the same spacing and set our number. Here we want three instances. Now rather than doing this as a feature or a face, I'll remove this out of here and we want to actually select the body itself. This body will keep these unmerged from the rest of the geometry so I can work with them independently and then merge them back once I'm ready to go. Again, this allows me to isolate the feathers alone. I'll right click to accept. And now we can see that the feathers just intersect themselves and with the original part because they're unmerged. Now the main reason that I wanted to do this was to create even little gaps around these feathers. We could certainly do this without doing this as a multi-body, but it would require more complex sketches as I'd have to get all the shapes just right to begin with. With the feathers isolated from everything else, I can kind of take my time and get the geometry right before I make a move. For example, we want to trim these feathers to the turkey body as well as to each other. So let's start a new sketch on the front face of one of these. We'll say sketch, and I want to reference the shape of the turkey body itself. From here, we'll use our offset entities, and we'll choose a value. I want a little extra buffer around the turkey body, so I'll bump this up to about a quarter of an inch. From here, we'll say OK. And I want to use this shape to trim out all of the feather bodies. So from here, we'll exit the sketch and create an extrude cut. Since we now have multiple bodies, we want to make sure that we're cutting the correct bodies. From here, I'll deselect, auto select, and we'll choose the bodies that we want to cut manually. In this case, these set of feathers. We'll say through all. Now remember, through all will only cut through the bodies that I have selected. Now we can hide the original body. I'll do this just by hovering my cursor over it and hitting the tab key. We now have the set of feathers as individual bodies isolated from everything else. Now all we have to do is use a similar technique to reference the other feather shapes onto each other. In this case, I want to trim the top one to reference these two. So again, we'll create a sketch. We'll use offset entities. We'll drop this down a bit. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now I can use this sketch to cut only this body. Again, we'll exit the sketch, create an extrude cut, choose with our feature scope, the body we'd like to cut, only this top one, We'll say through all, and we'll say okay. Note that the profiles didn't cut the secondary feathers, it only cut the top one. We'll use the same process on the bottom side again. This time to only cut these two. We'll say through all, and choose the bodies we'd like to be trimmed. One more time and we're almost there. Again, choose through all 
and choose the two bodies we want to be trimmed. Now we've very easily gotten the shape of the feathers as they need to be trimmed to each other and to existing geometry. Now we just need to bring back our original geometry and make this the negative of what we currently have as a solid. Again, I'll hover back where our original body was and I'll use shift tab to bring it back. If you're not used to using tab and shift tab, you can always make use of the bodies folder. From here, we'll use the combine tool, insert, features, combine, and we'll subtract the feather bodies from the original body. We'll set this to subtract, we'll select our main body, and we'll choose the feather bodies to remove. In this case, I'll select them from the tree. Shift select to select them all, and we'll say okay. We've now used a Boolean operation to remove the solid feathers from the existing plate. From here, we can continue as normal. Well, I hope you found this tip helpful and I hope to see you back next week. If you have another clever way to create geometry like this, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.